then you'll see here we have something called table rates. Now, table rates are actually very complex and really outside the scope of a beginner's tutorial like what we are doing. But just as a quick rundown, what the table rates allow you to do is to upload a spreadsheet that contains rules and parameters for what to charge for various shipping destinations, methods, etc. To get started, if you're interested in looking into table rates, you can export the CSV and it'll essentially give you a blank template to fill in and then you start filling in zip codes and all this kind of stuff. Again, it's pretty complex, really mostly suitable for large operations and definitely outside of the scope of a beginner's tutorial. You could probably do a full series just on setting up table rates. And then finally down here, you'll see various shipping services. We have UPS, United States Postal Service, FedEx and DHL. We're not going to look at each one of these because they're mostly similar, but just to give you an idea of what you're working with here, let's open up UPS. Now, if you want to use UPS or any of the others, make sure you enable it for checkout. Then if we take a look at UPS type, this is essentially the way your website gets information from UPS to automatically calculate shipping charges. Because whenever you choose UPS or FedEx or any of the others, it will automatically, your site will automatically calculate the shipping charges based on information from that company. You're almost always just going to want to stick with the defaults as far as where you're getting your information from. For live account, you need to mark this as yes. Otherwise, you're essentially running this in sandbox mode. Uh, live account is what you're supposed to mark when you're in production, your website is live, and you're actually using it to fulfill orders. This gateway URL is also going to need to stay the same in 99.9% .9 of cases. This is where your site is getting the information from, from UPS, in order to make those calculations for shipping costs. Then we have title here. In some cases, you might want to change this just to UPS because there are probably a lot of people who don't quite exactly know what UPS stands for. They don't know what United Parcel Service means. If they see UPS, though, that's a fairly somewhat universal acronym. Everybody knows what UPS is. So that's one thing I would recommend changing here. Then we have this weird field, Packages Request Type. And if you take a look at our options, we have Divide to Equal Weight, One Request, Use Origin Weight, Few Requests. This is, again, kind of weird, but basically what this field means is that if the order is split into multiple packages for whatever reason, the information is sent to UPS. If it's set to Divide Equal Weight, it's sent to UPS in one single request to get shipping cost information. Basically, you just want to keep this as it is. Then with container, you can select the type of packaging that you're going to be using for these shipments. Unit weight, pounds, that's pretty self-explanatory. Destination type, residential, that's going to be, for most retail websites, that's going to be what you're going for. Then you have maximum package weight, also self-explanatory. Pickup method, this is the way you're going to get these orders to UPS for them to ship for you. Minimum package weight. Calculate handling fee. You can add your own handling fee on top of whatever UPS is charging, similar to the handling fee for the flat rates. So we can have this be a fixed fee or a percentage fee. Let's say that in order to get everything packaged and all that, to do the work before UPS actually takes the shipment and you pay them, it costs you maybe $1.50 worth of labor. So that's just going to tack on an extra $1.50 for handling on top of whatever the shipping charges are. And as usual, we can do this per order or per item. In most cases, it makes most sense to do it per order. Then we have the allowed methods. These are all of UPS's shipping methods. By default, you can see that they're all gray. That means they're all selected. We can deselect this and then just choose specific ones. We'll just leave this as is. And on checkout, the customer can choose which one of these methods when they go with UPS. If you want to offer free shipping via UPS, obviously you're going to still be paying whatever the shipping charges are, but this free means your customer is not going to be paying any shipping. You'll first want to set the free shipping amount threshold. So 
let's say to kind of stick with the example we've been using, we're going to say that to encourage your customers to, to spend up to $50, you're going to give them free shipping if they spend $50. So you'll set that for the free shipping amount threshold. Make sure the free shipping amount threshold is enabled. And then you're going to need to choose what method is used when a customer opts for free shipping. So if they choose free shipping, they're going to get ground shipping. You can set this to something else. You can set this to next day or if you want to, that'd be pretty expensive for you, but you could do that. But you need to define here so the customer knows what type of shipping to expect if they do opt to go with the free shipping method. And then just like the other examples, we have the displayed error message, the countries that, you, that you'll ship to using this method. We also have show method if not applicable. If for whatever reason, this shipping method is not applicable to the customer or to the customer's order, if we keep this as no, then UPS simply will not show up as an option. Usually that's the best way to go. We do not want to run this in debug mode and we're going to keep this to the default sort order. With USPS, FedEx, and DHL, You'll see that everything is mostly the same. And again, we're not going to go through all of these, but there is one thing to point out with these three options, as opposed to UPS, you do need to provide information regarding the account you have with those services. So for USPS, for instance, you see that you have a field for your user ID and password that you'll need to input in order for this to work properly. Once you're done configuring shipping, as always, make sure you save your configuration. And we need to remember to go back and flush the cache. We didn't do that when the first pop-up came. So we'll go to cache management if we see this message up here. Or if you don't see this for whatever reason, remember you can always go to system and cache management. And it looks like, as usual, our page cache and our configuration need to be refreshed. We'll submit that. And for some reason, it's telling us that we need to refresh our page cache once again. So I'm gonna go back to this page and kind of act like I'm reloading it. We'll select page cache. Maybe I clicked the wrong thing the first time. And once all of that is flushed and everything says enabled, we're all set. 